and they are totally committed. It's a project that is going to cost between 12 to 15 billion dollars that will link Lagos to the south, west, south, 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 it's up to the north. If we achieve that, it will really improve communication and improve on our GDP as a nation. We're also working out with the governors of Bayelsa State for the Agadib Seaport, the governor of Akwaibom State for Mbakadib Seaport, and of course the governor of Delta State for our petrochemical complex in Ogidibbe. That is going to be the biggest complex in Nigeria. We are working very hard. I hope I'll come back to Delta State very soon for the grand uh, baking uh, ceremony. So working with government will improve the lot of our people. We all these projects are projects that will employ people, men and women. Just like you said that if government works with the private sector to create jobs for our young men and women, the number of people that the criminals will recruit into their criminal gangs will begin to reduce. And government will be able to isolate these criminals and deal with them as criminals. Let me use the unique opportunity to also support the request from the IYC president uh, in terms of the bunkering. Yes, our, there are big people involved in the bunkering. From the day I came in, even from the Asa State where I operated as a, de a deputy governor, little governor, we've been totally committed to reduce the bunkering. But it's difficult. We are trying to use different methods now, and I plead with Nigerians who are involved in bunkering to leave that business. You must leave bunkering. For our people that are being used by these so-called external internal big boys to damage our environment, if you fly across the Niger Delta and you see the level of devastation because of uh, the crude refineries we have in the forest, we are destroying our environment. We, ca we, cannot, we cannot recover it in the next 200 years. That means that because of the little money you want now, you are creating poverty for our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, our children unborn because of the little stipend you think you will get. No society can develop if you don't plan for your children and grandchildren. What you are doing is a disservice to yourself, to your future generation. It's like you are causing your future generation that they should not become human beings. They should be born with all kinds of deformities. They should not have an environment that they can exploit. And I always say that the, the first level of money, making money anywhere in the world is to convert the resources of the environment to means of exchange. So if you devastate your environment, there is nothing for you to convert to means of exchange, whether a dollar, a euro, or whatever. So we must collectively say no to bunkering, say no to these cool refining processes that take place in our land. People boil the crude oil, take about 20% of it and pour the remaining 70-80% to diversify the environment. It is not going to help us, it's going to destroy our future and we must collectively say no in spite of the little stipends you think you are getting. And government must stop it. And we are working very hard to stop it. Luckily, pro projects like this, the dockyards, the University and especially the Ogrigwe uh, petrochemical complex that is coming up and other ports we have described will help us to create jobs for our people. And we want our boys and girls to key into the training programs of the MESA and of course also the uh, Amnesty Office to improve on their skills so that they can work anywhere in the world. The marine business, the global business, the oil business, the global business. When you are well seen, you can work anywhere in the world. And that is why government is emphasizing in these uh, areas of skill acquisition, placing significant emphasis. I've also listened to the issue of judgment debt raised by the regent, 90 billion. Yeah. Well, uh, what we are putting in these two projects alone should be more than 100 billion. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying that that will replace the judgment debt. 
but we will look into it. So my brothers and sisters, I congratulate you and thank you for your commitment to change the history of our people, to bring development to our land, to encourage government, to make sure that we work with the private sector to create jobs for our people. I thank you all. That has been the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria thanking the people of Ukuruza, Baramatu Kingdom, Okerin Koku also in Baramatu Kingdom for their support and the enormous benefits of this institution. In a few minutes, the president will depart for Kerinkoko, a town along the Escravos Channel, where he will perform the groundbreaking of the permanent site of about 400 acres of land donated by 100 communities in Baramatu Kingdom for its establishment. It is expected to have administrative blocks, lecture rooms, VC lodge and staff quarters, student hostels and cafeteria, health center, library, fire station, workshop, bookshop, guest house, spa house, and perimeter fencing. It will also have access roads, internal road network, and drainages, Olympic standard size swimming pool, fair dome station, jetty, and room. Others are provision of electricity services and connection of the university to the national grid. center now is right about now going to Karen Coco for the groundbreaking proper. He's also expected to inspect facilities at the permanent site at the temporary site at Kurutier. Kurutier permanent site. The president will inspect state of the art facilities there. And one of the blessed uh, one of the communities blessed with enormous petroleum deposits.
While the president is taking off to Karen Koko, just a brief on uh, NIMASA. Uh, NIMASA has established institutes of maritime studies in four Nigerian universities. They include the University of Lagos, University of Nigeria and Suka, Niger Delta University, Amasoma, Bios State, and Ibrahim Badamosi, Babangida University, Lapai, Niger, Niger State. The objective of these institutes is to contribute to the production of high-quality future global maritime leaders and professionals through quality maritime education, training, and research. Majesty from Niger Delta area. Sir, could you please introduce yourself, sir? I'm His Majesty Pere Charles Kayemi Botu, Paramount Love Assembly Kingdom, JPOFR. Hey. I'm a national chairman of Trumpton. The university has been established here this period. Yes. What do you think it pertains for the fall of Niger Delta and indeed Nigerians? It pertains that there are good things that will happen as a result of this very, very epoch making. Uh, university. I think it's a good thing that is happening to the people of the Niger Delta. Now we're going to harness all the maritime activities by way of either to being trained abroad, we are not going to have such training right here. And in fact, it's going to create a lot of employment opportunities. And we're going to have it in such a way that the money in terms of our currency that we would have used in training our sons and daughters, now we are going to use it here. And those who have got the amnesty training, they would also have employment opportunities to work either as marine engineers and uh, fisheries, leisure, and a lot of things that will come to our people here. It's very, very significant, and we thank God for this wonderful event that is happening here today. Thank you, sir. God bless thank you. Thank you, sir. The very majority have spoken on the market of this university in this area. Sir, could you please introduce yourself? I'm Reverend Dr. Godwin Sirai, JP. Okay, sir. Yeah. You are just talking about the multiply effect of the university being built there. Yeah. But like the president said, there's no meaningful development in anywhere in the world without peace. Yeah. Some time ago, there was a little crisis around here. Now there's peace. And this is why we are enjoying this yeah. today. Tell me, how would you as a person yeah. help the government to sustain this peace so that this development will continue? Yeah, thank you very much. We're working hard. That is what we did during the heat of the crisis. We had to call for our youth. We trained them. There were seminars. There were programs arranged for the youth. So as they laid their hands, we talked to them in various fora. And thank God they have here to sense of reason. They have laid their hands. And that is the peace we are enjoying today. And for the president to come this time around, to establish a university in the Niger Delta is a plus for us. We are going to ensure that we build in this peace process by talking to ourselves, 
ensuring that in our churches we will preach peace, in our homes we will preach peace, in every area we will talk about peace. Peace is the ultimate. We must talk about peace so that more development can come to our region. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate yeah. it. Sir, can you please introduce yourself? I'm uh, Bishop Dr. Samson Amagina JP, okay. the president of the Job Pastors and Ministers Fellowship. All right, sir. The Christendom is growing day by day, and they have been tolerant of the whole lot of things that are coming up. How would you support government to ensure that there's no reprisal of any form in what is going on around the, the country right now? Uh, on Wednesday last week, precisely, we staged a prayer conference for Mr. President. What we do as ministers is to pray for government because we are enjoining scriptures to pray for leadership so that they will have peace to operate. So our role is specified biblically, but we are also asking government to give assistance to clergymen. As we are praying and peace is you know, coming upon the land and the nation, in turn, government will also recognize the clergymen that are working hard to ensure that that spiritual environment is created. So what will be your role in ensuring that development is sustained, especially with this new We will continue to pray and admonish the youth and elders to ensure that the environment is peaceful for the university to thrive. That's the most we can do. And also, we are also appealing that Uh, basically, the president is actually moving in that direction uh, to really empower the youth. And I want to believe that uh, we all know about the UN program that has been backed upon by the federal government. And that's uh, an apt opportunity for the youth to showcase their potential in terms of starting their own personal business. And uh, basically, I want to quickly uh, also inform that uh, basically we are from the adult part of uh, the job community. And uh, our area to reach some level of development. And you can uh, also, you are also aware that the first. Uh, How will you cash in on the opportunity created by the government to ensure that you develop yourself and around you? Yeah, basically, it's to create a, a peaceful environment and a neighborly environment for peace to thrive so that uh, we can attract uh, both uh, local investors and foreign investors. Thank you very, very much. It, it has been wonderful bringing the presentation to you. My name is Salma Eliog. I will hand you over to the OB van for the rest of the program. Good afternoon. Thank you very much there, Salma. Right about now, we, we are launching a documentary on improving lives in the Niger Delta through infrastructure development and human capital empowerment. With a coastline of over 850 kilometers,